Hello everybody and welcome to the broadcast today, Intercession to Deliver Cities and Nations. What a topic. Generally when you hear this kind of topic, you know, there's books that have come out, there's things that are being said about intercession that gets breakthroughs in regions, in cities, nations. It actually is possible. Uh, through our work and different prayer movements we've worked with, we've been able to see things happen in the nations of the world that our ministry goes into that become trigger points or detonators for not just signs of transformation, but a momentum in that nation towards transformation. One important point that I want to make here is that for nations to change, there's a momentum required. And that momentum of good or that momentum of change within a nation begins with a momentum of prayer and a momentum in the spirit. This is really powerful. But it also begins with the mindset of the church, the people in that particular nation. I want to share with you today just a couple scriptures and then I'm going to jump into the real meat of this because several people from different parts of the world has, have asked me to speak on this subject and I think now more than ever it's especially uh, relevant. So first scripture I want to give to you because it's absolutely necessary when the church in any city, in any nation goes to bring about a deliverance or a shift, uh, we have to know from which position we stand. We have to understand authority. Authority is a big deal when it comes to nation changing. First, uh, first uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says, He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them. So you've got to know that Jesus has won this victory already. Jesus has authority and he delegated authority to us. So you've got to understand that the, uh, the issue of jurisdiction has been dealt with. In other words, we, the people of God, have the right to rule. Not to rule over people, but to rule over demonic powers, to dethrone demonic powers and principalities that would be wanting to continue to occupy territory like they have for hundreds, thousands of years, so to speak. Now, the next scripture I want to give you is a really important one that's found in Joel chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. It says this, Proclaim this among the nations. Consecrate for war, stir up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. This is a call for warfare, essentially, what's being said here. Now look at this in verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am a warrior. What's a plowshare and what's a pruning hook? Those essentially are harvesting tools. Those are the tools that we would go out to use when it comes to reaching or getting, bringing in the harvest. But look what it says here. Turn your plowshares, beat them, transform your plowshares and pruning hooks into swords and spears. Swords and spears are weapons of war. The principle that we're seeing here in Joel is that before a harvest can be gathered, before a harvest can be easily gathered, before a harvest can be uh, brought in, there must be war. Spiritual warfare always precedes the gathering of the harvest or any momentum in reaching the harvest. When you see nations head into a time of accelerated momentum in the area of evangelism, discipling the city, discipling the nation, there has been some kind of warfare that has gone on prior. For example, we're beginning to see, as our history maker society, an amazing momentum of transformation taking place in Bulgaria. We're seeing many equipped, we're seeing souls saved, we're seeing deliverance, and we're seeing the nation begin to be touched with genuine signs of transformation. This all began, uh, I'm not giving the credit to our ministry, many of wonderful ministries in Bulgaria, but this acceleration that we began to see uh, when we set up our academy there. But what people don't realize is what preceded that momentum and some of these breakthroughs was nine months of a group, a large group of women, they're called the Wailing Women, that began to intercede for nine months. And they were praying, interceding, nine months of prayer, believing for breakthrough in Bulgaria, 
And guess what happened? The breakthrough came. Right at the tail end of that nine months of targeted intercession, uh, things began to happen tangibly in the, in the nation itself. So when we uh, get into how nations are transformed, there are key things that must take place, key breakthroughs that must take place in the spirit first. Now, I want to show you this and tell you a little bit about how we began to experience not just open heavens or deliverance in Bulgaria and some of the places that we've gone, but how this began to happen in our own uh, city of Oshawa, Ontario. We have experienced some amazing transformation. We've experienced some amazing breakthroughs. And I want to highlight these because the principles are the same anywhere. They operate anywhere. And that's why a number of people have asked if I would teach on this. Normally we only teach on this in uh, our course, in our History Makers trainings. And I'm not going to give it all here, but just some things that might help you to understand how to have breakthrough in your own city, region, whatever. I may not be able to do the whole thing in one session. We may have to break this into two sessions, so bear with me on that. But uh, it was a number of years ago, after we had seen and experienced about seven or eight years of revival meetings, uh, I became frustrated with wanting to see the Great Commission fulfilled, wanting to see our city reached. That's what I had the faith for. At that time, uh, I was pastoring, and I closed the door to my office, turned out the lights, and decided to make myself homeless <laughs> in the street for three days for the purpose of interceding and praying for our city. I had never prayed for three days straight. I didn't know how to be homeless, but this is what I chose to do. And uh, when I went out into the street, I began praying and after about a half hour went by, I sort of ran out of things to pray for. <laughs> I had rebuked the demons of this and I had, I was binding and loosing and I was, you know, rebuking every demonic power I could think of and walking the streets of our city and pretty much after a half hour to an hour, I didn't really know what to pray for anymore. So I was just kind of walking and praying in tongues and I still had three days to go. And I thought, over the next three days, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm out here on the street and, and I didn't know how to pray beyond that. And the Lord was really gracious in giving me a revelation from a particular scripture that I want to give away today. And uh, I want to first start off by saying that, um, you know, we don't attribute the breakthrough that we've had in our city to myself, to our church, to my father, to, to anybody exclusively, because there's been incredible prayer ministries, incredible city ministries, incredible unity ministries, fellowships, networks, um, all kinds of people God has used over the years to bring about breakthrough in our city of Oshawa, which it's, it's been significant breakthrough, and I'll tell you about it. But what you have to understand first and foremost is when that momentum goes, there can be just several small things that can tip the balance into great breakthrough and great transformation in a city. A number of years ago, as we began to pray for our city, we really didn't know how to pray. As I said, I was rebuking the demons and we were holding prayer meetings and we just prayed sort of in ignorance. We weren't sure how to see the deliverance of our city. It was at that time it came to our attention that we had an issue related to Freemasonry. The foundation of our city was really established by the Masons. They had financed most things, hospitals, different things. And so because they were the financiers, they were so organized, they had a great strong hold over uh, our city. And at that time, as we began to pray, when we discovered that there was this major issue in the city, that's when our challenges began because we began to pray in ignorance and rebuke different demons and spirits. And you know what? We began to see people get sick. We began, some even died. People, uh, godly people got, you know, a brain tumor, brain tumors, just one thing after another was happening. And the Lord was gracious in giving me a dream one night. And in this particular dream, I was playing baseball 
and uh, you know how prophetic dreams are. And, and I hit the ball and I began to run to first base. And as I began to run, I was now up over top of the baseball diamond, watching myself run the bases. And of course, the baseball diamond formed the free Freemasonry uh, diamond, the, symbol, the Masonic symbol. And I had a revelation in the dream that if I were to make it and round the bases, I was going to be struck by the enemy because I hadn't come into proper alignment with certain things. I didn't understand certain spiritual principles. And the Lord showed me an outcome and what to do about it. When I woke up from the dream, I spoke to my father, who's the senior pastor of our church, and I began to discover the power of who you align with. Aligning with authorities and being in right relationship with with authorities over you and around you is absolutely crucial. The critical mass when taking on the big demons, so to speak, and principalities is absolutely crucial. That's why it's so powerful that so many are gathering and praying and we have this critical mass lifting up prayers to deal with this coronavirus, this global issue right now. So as my father and I began to really come together and gather a critical mass of people to begin to deal with the foundational issues of our city, something fantastic began to happen.